and then I seen the full miracle. That's probably one of the great, because that's somebody you know. Yeah. So when you see a miracle like that, it speaks to you, because now it hit home. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, that you have to stay focused and fixed on the Word of God and on your calling, knowing that uh, no matter what, you're not going to give up on your calling. There's no time limit on your calling. Your calling is forever. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Winning Conversations. We have a very special episode today. We have Joe and Joyce McCrowski with us. How are you guys doing? Great. We're doing great. It's so good to have you all on the podcast. Thank I know you've you. been here before, but this is your it's first, my time. first time. Good to have you all. Glad to be back. And Eric Jackson is here with us. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good to have you, too. <laughs> I'm not to used to back. having you. You're next to me. It's good to have you. It's always good to be here. So we are doing this legacy series talking about the legacy of Dr. Savell. And you guys have been serving the ministry, serving him for 44 years, right? Yeah. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that, your experience, the roles that you've played, all of that. Go ahead. Well, I think one thing would be how we got here, you know. Uh, when Joe and I first got born again, and we knew we was called to the ministry, mm -hmm. we were like, well, we don't know where we're supposed to be or what we're supposed to be doing. And, and we feel like we're supposed to be in the ministry, but we don't know where. And Joe's like, well, I hope it's not with Jerry, because that's his cousin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we're like, and I'm like, Jerry's in the ministry. So he told me all about Brother Jerry and, and was like, well, we'll just keep praying and believe in God. So when we knew, because we knew, because we knew we were supposed to come be at Jerry's ministry, and we hadn't talked to him or anything. And so it was kind of like a game at home yeah. uh, with Joe's son and my daughter and ourselves. Before we'd pick up the phone, we'd say, yes, Jerry, we'll come to your, <laughs> come uh, uh, work for you at the ministry. And then we'd answer, of course, it wasn't him at that time. Yeah. And so finally, one day, Brother Jerry called Joe and told him. Just that, out of the blue. Just out of the blue yeah. that he wanted him to us both to come down and talk to him. So we flew down and talked to him about coming to work for the ministry. And so we knew already that mm -hmm. that's where we were supposed to be. We didn't talk about salaries, benefits, no. yeah. or anything. Not anything. I was in banking, high-level banking. Right. And if I took another job with another bank, it was all about benefits. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We never talked about any benefits. So we came. We didn't even know what we were going to make or anything. That had to have been God. Mm -hmm. It was God. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. May 80, uh, May 1st, 1980, we left uh, Henrietta and moved to Texas wow. and came to work for Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn. Most of our families thought we missed it. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. they loved yeah. us and they missed us, you know, but they thought we missed it. But we knew we heard God. Yeah. 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 So yeah. when it comes to calling, it's like when you know you know you're called, then the word says if you leave your father, your mother, your sisters, your brothers, and all of those friends – and go and serve him, then you'll be blessed. Mm -hmm. so that's and so and you've been here ever did. since. Here and ever so since. we came, and yeah. we started working with them. Yeah. What were you doing and when you first moved here? What were you doing well, for him? Uh, I was overall the business because he didn't have a good business person to do it. And mm -hmm. That's one reason he called me because he knew I was in banking, had been a police officer. Mm -hmm. And so he said, well, those two combinations, Joe's got to be the one I need. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I came down strictly for the business. Mm -hmm. But within six months, he put me over everything because he needed somebody that could or orchestrate all of it. So mm -hmm. at first, I wasn't traveling with him quite as much. And uh, and I didn't really know how to live by faith because in banking, you had a budget. They gave you a total. You didn't have to worry about bringing the money in. You just had a budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here, when I got here, I said, so how much is our yearly income? Well, we live by faith. Well, I didn't know what that meant. You know, so I didn't even know if I'd get a salary. We'd get one. Yeah. So, 
So then I had to learn how you live by faith and yeah. how you believe in. And and then when he put me over everything, now at that time, you got to remember, we didn't have everything we have now, but we did have Overcoming Faith Church, okay, Bible school, okay, Christian school, and all that. Right. And so that was all under my, my covering. And uh, that's when I first learned that I could fulfill all my callings in another man's ministry uh, because I didn't know I was called to any of the things I was getting ready to do. Okay. But I learned real quick. Yeah. And all you got to do is just get before the Lord again, get in his presence, pray, find out what he's saying and then obey. Mm-hmm. And that's really the secret to almost everything that brother Jerry ever did mm-hmm. is we would all get together. We would pray, seek God and see what he said. And then we never had the finances to do any of it. So the provision always came. Mm-hmm. but it was not until we made a decision to do what he told us. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Okay. So I wore every hat. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. and then, I then feel like that's a ministry, ministry thing, though, for yes. all of us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> then as the ministry grew, then we yeah. had the departments and everything, and I illustrated that. And I was really into sales and everything. Where So when we came here, the first time we um, made new artwork and everything, mm-hmm. we boosted our production sales 500% that year. Oh, wow. And, but only because of just marketing, mm-hmm. you know. So there was just a lot of things I already had talent with, but then a lot of things I learned. Yeah. And what yeah. about you, Joyce? What did you do? Well, I at that time, mostly I didn't work. I stayed at home with it. But, well, I did work. I had done hair. Wow. So I'm a hairstylist. <laughs> nice. And so, you know, you wonder, like, when you're training I always wanted to be a hairstylist, so, you know, I'd sit on the back of the couch and do my mom's hair and all that, Mm -hmm. so I went to a cosmetology school, not knowing that that talent would be something I would use in the ministry, and that's what I tell people, well, you know, things you learn are learning now, you wonder why you're not in the ministry yet, but maybe that's going to be something you're going to use, like... Joe was finance, and I done hair. Mm-hmm. And so eventually, you know, there were times I would do Miss Carolyn's hair for her mm-hmm. and and uh, things like that. But I worked as a hairstylist when we first moved to Fort Worth. Yeah, ministry is not yeah. just yeah. being a preacher right. or no, a track. Like a, yeah, no. and so I didn't right off start working at the ministry. Yeah. I done hair and things like that. And uh, we did travel some uh, with Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, yeah. and we did some married seminars with them. But we didn't minister; we just went with them to yeah, sell books them. and tapes. Yeah. You know, I say tapes because that's what <laughs> used to be cassettes. Yes. Right, right, right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think I know what those are. Yeah, <laughs> cassette so, tapes. Yeah, but we really learned a lot too by just uh, watching sorry. Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn. Yeah, soaking and it and learning. Yeah, you know, kind of all. funny things like when they do a marriage seminar. And mm-hmm. then they get in a big fight and wouldn't talk to each other. <laughs> You're human, it happens. Yeah. It happens. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But in those that's moments, it. you get to see the realness yeah. of applying the word. Yeah. Of what yeah. They just said. That's the, yeah. the one thing that somebody asked me one time said, So what's the difference in Brother Jerry and a lot of ministers? I said, Well, number one, he's a people person mm-hmm. where a lot of people are not. They mm-hmm. could be still good ministers, they could be highly anointed, but if they're not a people person, I think God was, a, I think Jesus was a people person oh, yeah. all the way. Oh, yeah. Okay, with kids or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And that's what impressed me because he never was different whether he was in the pulpit or at home. That's good. Mark James asked him one time, said, uh, hey, Pop, said, why does, why does Mr. Joe call you brother? He said, he's your cousin. <laughs> okay. And Brother Jerry said, well, he honors me. And, and he said, we are cousins. And when we do cousin things, we do cousin things. Yeah. yeah. But he said, he respects me, and that's why he calls me brother. And I thought, because that, that's really what it was. Yeah. So mine was kind of a bifo, not only family, mm-hmm. but ministry partners yeah. too, all, yep. all those years. Can't remember ever having a fight. I didn't say I agreed with him all the time, but I'd get an agreement. Yeah. If he yeah. shared something that I didn't think would work, I still got an agreement. Because it's his vision. Right. right. Okay, and that's still what we flow yes, with. Yes, right. Even ministry. though we have yeah. our parts to put with it now, it's still his vision and uh, Miss Carolyn's. And so that's so that's what I learned just a lot of time. And I'll tell you some funny stories <laughs> once we get started. Yeah. But and some before things. we came to serve Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, 
we would drive up to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to yeah. Kenneth Hagen's and yeah. some of those meetings. And so one day we went up, and this is when they still had the Bible school yeah. in that uh, church. Yeah, it was in Sheridan Assembly. Yeah. And so we went up there to hear a speaker. You remember who it Norval was? Norval Hayes. Norval Hayes or someone. Well, it ended up he wasn't able to get there, so they were going to have like just a random speaker. Mm-hmm. I think they were someone that maybe ministered at the school sometimes. But anyway, they said, you're welcome to leave if you don't want to stay. And we was like, no, we want to stay. And a lot of people We left. want to hear the word. A lot yeah. of people left. You so know, we, some people left, but we stayed. We stayed. And so he called us up. Uh, it was uh, Kenny. What was his name? Do you remember? Ken Martin. He was over all the... Rama schools. Okay. So anyway, he schools. called us up and prophesied to us and said, you're called to ministry, and it's going to be a, a peculiar calling that you have. And wow. so we have seen that come <laughs> to fruition over yeah. the years, that we have been in ministry all these years, serving Brother Jerry and Miss Carolyn, but also ministering as we, you know, went and ministered on the our own time yeah. and stuff yeah. and uh, so Doing just both. listening to the mm-hmm. spirit of god and being led by the spirit and of there god. was yeah. one older lady in our church back home in henrietta that gave us the same prophecy way before he did mm-hmm. but wow. nobody she's a little grandma didn't get out <laughs> of the house i mean she spent eight hours a day praying mm-hmm. wow. and so we was in a prayer meeting one night and she told us almost the same thing wow that's the first time we heard it uh-huh. And she, but she did. She added. She said, "Don't ever let it go to your head." And we never have. Amen. That's good because advice. That, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. so that's yeah. a part. That's a part of pride. Yeah, you don't let it go to your head. Yes, yes. that's and where her, a lot of preachers get lost. And it is, yeah, it is. Yeah. We've seen that. And we a lot. never forgot yeah. that prophecy. And then, and then when he, when we, uh, when he said, "Go serve Jerry and Karen Savelle," mm-hmm. well, we didn't know what they had. We didn't know if it was church. We didn't know if it was, I knew it was business. Okay, I knew that. Yeah. But I didn't know anything else, you know. Yeah. And so a lot of the things we just, as it was added to his vision, because mm-hmm. the vision grows, and as he would write it down, and that's where prayer petition came. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. every time we would give us something, we would write it down, mm-hmm. and then we ran with it mm-hmm. until it spoke. Okay? And so uh, we... It didn't matter what he asked us to do, we'd do. Yeah, yeah. Because it said, "Come serve Jerry and Kelly and Savelle." And I, I and make it's jokes. not always going to a church meeting. Not at all. It's <laughs> sometimes getting the paint paintbrush and going and painting the or whole painting ministry, daisy, or planting daisies, <laughs> wow. or, or going, going out, out and planting flowers. Flowers, yeah, we've you done know, that. Yeah. It was whatever we become a we gardener. were asked yeah. to do. We done it. A painter, a gardener. Yes. we've done all of it. That yeah. is ministry. That's though. ministry. It That's is. Ministry. That is ministry. It's willing Being to obey. serve, honoring with whatever you're asked to do. Yes, for and, sure. And, and I can imagine within that time you learn some gifts and traits that you didn't know that you had. For oh sure. yeah. Right. Oh for can sure. Can you yes. share a little bit about those? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in South Africa, did eight hours on a serving uh, uh, how you fulfilled your ministry in another man's ministry. I did eight hours for their Bible school. All right. And it was talking about which you, you called it. it it's, you're his uh, prayer warrior, you know, and you're there with him all time. You pray for him. You know, really, if you go in prayed up, you'll know what he's going to do before he ever does it because you're both doing it in the spirit. It's not yeah. the, yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. the mm-hmm. flesh. Amen. And so uh, there's a lot of illustrations. Like one time we went into a meeting and, We'd spend lots of time in prayer, and the Lord said there's going to be uh, some demonic forces, and I kind of figured that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we were in California, mm-hmm. one of the worst places for demonic forces, oh, wow. and uh, <laughs> we were in there, and a little girl came up and said, "I need prayer for my baby. The baby's terminal." I didn't pick up on it that there was any kind of a spirit there. I said, "Well, at the appropriate time, I'll call you up and we'll pray for the baby." And so Jerry and Jesse both. This was one of the joint meetings we were doing. And uh, so they got ready. I called her up, and she come up, and I, the Lord said, "Man, she's gonna throw that baby." Stop. You know, and, and I said, "I said, so, I said, Lord, I'm picking him now. She's demonic all the way." Wow. He said, "She is. She's possessed." Wow. So I knew now I got two jobs. Okay. Yeah. Now Brother Jerry and Brother Jesse's ready, so you don't have to prepare them. Yeah. Right. But your job as an armor bearer and as the warrior that's gonna take care of them, you got to know what your part is. Yeah. And, and I right. said that. 
in the uh, kingdom builders is you got to know God's part and your part. Mm -hmm. And she threw the baby. I caught it with one hand, and I passed it back to a to an usher, and I picked her up by the throat up off the floor. So, and I now they're coming over now to get her set free, and we got her delivered. But stuff like that, you don't prepare for that other yeah. than the spirit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's what I was going to ask. Like, how do you prepare for something like In that? In the spirit, and yeah. you listen and you obey. And when God, as soon as He said she's going to throw the baby, and I said, "Yeah," and she's got a real bad spirit. And he said, "Yes, she does. You better be ready." And he said, "She's a wildcat." But hey, I grabbed <laughs> my heart her. is beating really fast. I grabbed her by the throat. That was the old police work coming back. Yeah, okay? yeah. So, oh my gosh, but stuff like that happen all the time. But if you're in tune, uh-huh. you'll know what he's going to do. Yeah. You'll know exactly what he's going to do. So what, what happened? Did you get her delivered? Oh yeah, she got delivered. But two of our staff members. Mm-hmm. We caught them. They were up in the balcony. They didn't want no part of that demon. And so when I'm looking around for my my cohorts, okay, my assistants, they're, out of they're up in the, they don't want no part of it. They're out of there. And I, we got back to the room and I said, guys, I said, I needed you guys. Yeah. They yeah. didn't want no part of that demonic Well, that's forces. a very intimidating situation to be yeah, in. Like, is. you really have yeah. to be prayed up and you trust be. God because that's, yeah, that's, it's scary yeah. stuff and well, it's we real. Well, we read the Bible where, he went, where they tore the pants off of them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Oh my so gosh. What can yeah. I say? That, would that be. was just a few of the things. Yeah. But we really learned a lot when we first come down because. We knew how to flow in the spirit. Mm-hmm. We went to Pentecostal spirit-filled churches that knew how to move, mm-hmm. even a lot more than some of our Word of Faith churches at yeah. that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we thought we were taking a seat backwards, except for learning the Word like we had never learned it before. The Word of Faith. Right. right. We had heard the Word of Faith by our pastor for about a year, I guess. Yeah. But that's all we were exposed to it. But knowing how to move in the gifts of the spirit. We didn't have to practice none on those. We knew how to do that. <laughs> I, mean, that was good. Yeah. I already knew how to do that. Yeah. So in your travels with Dr. Savell, what's like the coolest miracle that you witnessed? Him. <laughs> Him? Him. Yeah. Yeah, when he had the full-blown stroke. Oh. I'm in, oh, Mon- that, yeah, that's I'm a in good, Montana. That's a good now, I'll tell you another one, but yeah. first that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm in Montana because he couldn't go. Mm-hmm. He, he's having that procedure. Right. He said, Joe, you need to go to Montana with chariots, and you do all the ministering because they know you up there. You took me, Brother Copeland, and Jesse up there. Yeah. And so because I started going to Montana years ago. And so when Joyce sent me the video, and I started crying because Joyce's dad had a stroke. Mm-hmm. And he never got over it 60% probably. He couldn't mm-hmm. walk straight. And so when I seen Brother Jerry, I just got to crying. Yeah. And I said, so, Lord, what do I do? Do I go home? He said, no, you do what Jerry sent you up here for. I came to serve, so okay. what am I doing? Serving. Serve. So I went to me, so I said, okay, how can I let the people pray but not know what's happened because I don't know if they're going to put it out yet. Right. Yeah. And right. so I picked three ministries, and I got up, and I said, Okay, I want all of us to pray for three ministries, Brother Kenneth Higgins, Brother Jerry Savell, and I said four, I think, and Brother uh, Kenneth Copeland and Jesse Duplantis. Mm-hmm. I want us to pray for their health, good health. I want to pray for their provision, for everything they need to call, to do. What, and so I laid it out, Yeah. Mm-hmm. but mainly it was for Brother Jerry. Right. right. Okay. And then when I came home and went to the hospital and, and got him and took him home, and then I seen the full miracle. That's probably one of the great, because that's somebody you know. Yeah. Yeah. So when you see a miracle like that, it speaks to you, because now it hit home. Right. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But probably one of the others close to that were in Africa, and and the Lord said, Joe, get your camera, because I took all the pictures. And that time, 35 millimeter, (laughs) 400, 100, 200, because you had to go by the the light. Darkest Africa is darkest Africa. And, I mean, you better have something good to get your photos because mm-hmm. that flash is going 15 foot. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I, it's daylight, though. And the Lord <laughs> said, get your camera. And I said, so what What film? He said, 100. I mean, he's detailed when you yeah. listen. Yeah. Put 100 in it. He said, now focus in on him. And they brought the man. His eyelids were closed just like his. Red Jerry said, I commend those eyes to open up in the name of Jesus Christ. They come open, but they were milky as could be. Yeah. And I shot the first picture, eyes closed. 
Second picture, eyes open, but milky. Uh-huh. And then he said, I command them, I command them to clear it up. And you, and I shot the next picture, getting clear. Next picture, a little more clear. I shot about probably six to eight pictures. Wow. And the last one, he says, can you see? He said, yeah, but they look like trees. What it say in the Bible? When Jesus said, can you see? And they said, oh, they, yeah, but it looks like trees. And he prayed for him again, and then they cleared up. And then a big smile came on his face. That's the last picture I got. Wow. And he was perfectly healed. Praise 30 God. years in that village, he was blind. Everybody oh knew gosh. him. And then the miracles just started activating. Yeah. You didn't mm-hmm. have to pray, nothing. It just started activating. I uh, love that. Yeah. Oh, I love that. that. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I got <get> chills. <laughs> I still get the goosebumps. I know. I Holy like that a lot. <laughs> uh, any life lessons that you have, Joyce? Life lessons that you learned over the years. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'd say stay in the word, stay prayed up, and uh, I always like I always think about those little monkeys. See no evil, hear no evil, <laughs> speak <Yeah>. no evil. <laughs> I was I like, that. I want to do a teaching on that and have the little statues up there. Cute. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I like That's that. That's the life lessons. Amen. You know, that you have to stay focused and fixed yeah. on the Word of God and on your calling, mm-hmm. knowing that uh, no matter what, you're not going to give up on your calling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that even as you get older and, and uh, things change, you know, seasons change. Yeah. But if you stay fixed and focused on your calling mm-hmm. and what God's called you to do, because there's no time limit no. on your That's calling. Your good. calling is forever and while we're here on this earth, and then we go to heaven. Mm-hmm. But while we're here, it's staying fixed and focused on your calling. What's God called you to do? Maybe it's called to be a good housewife or a good barber or mm-hmm. a hairstylist or a makeup artist. God can use all those things, all those people, all those traits for his kingdom, yes. to increase his kingdom. Tell them about so, the, you praying for the ladies. In, when she was a BD operator, mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of religious people, and, and they were saved, but they didn't have the spirit or anything. Tell yeah, them about so how you prayed that. I would, you know, pray for them, ask them, you know, if they needed prayer or you know, if they'd like for me to pray for them. And almost anyone will say, yes, yeah. you know, I'll I'll be glad to have you pray for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when I got uh, born again, I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. And I hated it. <laughs> and at that time, back years ago, yeah. I won't tell how old I am, but, you know, <laughs> I wasn't a baby when I came. <laughs> and so, anyway, back then... When you were a hairstylist, you could smoke. Yeah, as you done hair. So we always had a cigarette, you know, lit. which is wild. And, and we'd have to stop, and take a puff, you oh know, my gosh. while we, you know, tease someone's yeah. hair, or whatever. All these chemicals that and <laughs> in your hair, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. But they didn't care because you were so good mm-hmm. at um. your job doing their hair and everything. And so anyway, when I got born again. Uh, <clears throat> I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. And I did one stop, five stop, now, ten steps. Let me all tell that. the story. <laughs> well, I just talked about the steps. You know those steps you could buy so, to get her off. Yes. Joe, oh, Joe, didn't, Joe didn't smoke or anything. You know, he was kind of a goody two shoes when I met him, you know. And so uh, when God delivered me, before that, Joe had tried to get me to quit smoking, mm-hmm. you know. So back then they had this little box. And it had like one, two, three, four, five steps. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> and you'd put your cigarette in the end of it, and you'd smoke it, you know. And each week you changed, and you'd get less and less. Oh, that was the five goodness. steps. They didn't but work. They didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm why? Successful. It was my choice. Yeah. I really didn't want to quit. Yeah. Uh, you right. know? Yeah. 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 But cute. when I went to church that day with my family, and I got born again, before I got back to my mom's house, I was like, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was faith. Yeah. You know, a step of faith. And so when I got there, I took them out and laid them on the table. 
And I said, I'm not going to smoke anymore. You know, it kind of tears me up because when I got born again, I was in this little church, and it was like the Holy Spirit came in. I didn't know it at that time, yeah. what it was. It was like a cloak was put up on me. And I went down to the altar. They were still all up there singing. It'd be <laughs> like at our church if someone came run to the altar while they're having praise and worship, right. people would be like, what? What are they doing, <laughs> you know? And so they all quit and come and prayed for me. But anyway, God delivered me Amen. that day. Biggest witness to me I've ever seen. I'm t- I'm serious. Yeah. yeah. Probably halfway le- what led me into the kingdom. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a miracle. So, you know. She couldn't do it on her own. No way. No. No, you never can. No. You never True. can. Yeah. And then I got filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, later, a couple of weeks later or so. We went to the church we started going to. And, uh, you know, God just has a way of moving. Yes. If you in your him. life, you know. Yeah. If you so, love him. Yeah. So. After that, several yeah. times in meetings that me and Joyce would do for Brother Jerry, or whether we did them on our own, mm-hmm. uh, she would call people up that was wanting to quit smoking, and they get delivered immediately. I mean, some of them, she'd hit their chest, and I mean, they knocked knocked them back <laughs> and down. Yeah. yeah. Or she'd like, get them out and make them tear them up on the floor. Seen several people delivered, you know. Yeah. Yes. So that's how God uses your gifts yes. that you maybe don't know you have. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. But they never cease. They're still there. And he will always put you before great people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you hear Brother Jerry, he said that all the time. He said, you know, your gift will make a way for you. It'll always put you before great, great yeah. people. Doesn't mean great saved people. It means great people. In mm-hmm. other words, well-known in the world, but maybe not good Christians, but well-known in the world. But it's usually for a witness, yeah. to be a witness to them. Yeah. That's good. And never give up. And never give you know. up, no. On your prayers right. or what you're believing for. That's good. Yeah. So what does the future look like for you guys after Brother Jerry transitioning to heaven? What What's what's y'all's roles or what are y'all doing to carry on this legacy? Well, <laughs> I'm retired now. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's retired. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, retired. I, yeah. yeah. I said, I'm not really retiring, I'm refiring. Yeah. So okay. I'm just not going into the office every day. Yeah. But like I told Miss Carolyn, I don't have to be here at the office. You know, I'm still serving you. I'm still here for you. I'm just a phone call away. Yeah. You know, so I'm still serving, mm-hmm. you know, her in whatever she needs. Yes. She knows she can call me at any time. And, um, but, and I want to spend more time, you know, in prayer and things like that. That's good. So, That's good. And believing for the ministry, yes. you know, because we need that now. We need prayer. Yeah. You my know, part, warriors. My part just got to be in, I could increase it because when uh, Brother Jerry first passed away, mm-hmm. okay, I went to Miss Karen and I said, I won't be over all the ministry. I won't be over it anymore. Mm-hmm. I said, I did it when Brother Jerry uh, when the girls left, you know, he the girls had the ministry for a while. When they left, he wanted me to take it over because he knew I knew how to do it. Yeah. But I told him, I don't want to do that. And he said, but I need you to because you know what to do. So me and Ken took over, and we did it for years. But mm-hmm. then I went to her, and I said, I don't feel called to do it anymore, but I'll still do all of what I do international. And yeah. so then that's when the new tears come up. You know, they put the new... Uh, of course, uh, Nikki's over administration, mm-hmm. and what I used to have to be overall. And then Eric is PC and some of the other things like partner service right. and stuff like that. I'm under my block is uh, Patty, the schools, mm-hmm. uh, Chariots of Light, and then, of course, all of our international. So mine, we just increased yeah, because I have no limitations to have to try to do all that other now yeah. and then do that up too. So you're, you're having to split your time. Mm-hmm. I split my time. So ours really, I don't see except for going up mm-hmm. and putting more out there. Yes. Uh, we started four new schools just within two weeks. Wow. Okay. And these are the schools that we do in the church, classroom setting mm-hmm. with 10 students or more. Okay. It's a one-year course. And then we give them a graduation. And so, uh, and then we're doing more books, right. more languages. So none of, and then of course, Bill and them just got back from Sturgis. 4,800 new souls. So that's for chariots. all. Yeah, for chariots. So 
that's all under my block. Yeah. And so we just, and of course Keep now, going. all we're doing is saying, okay, how can we do it better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We don't have to change the vision because we already know what the vision right. is. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brother Jerry has set the vision so good that we don't have to work. Now we'll have to say what new parts do we put or how do we modify what we're doing to be better? Right. That's the only thing we have to do. So we don't see it slowing down at all. Yeah. I leave uh, the 21st, which is Wednesday for Canada. I'll be up there a week. And then soon as, uh, soon as we come back, then I'm up there in September, me and Eric for about 16 days, Canada. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, we go Ethiopia. Now you asked me what one of the highlights for brother Jerry was Mm -hmm. Ethiopia. Really? Mm. Yeah. When we went to Kenya, uh, Kenya was a stepping stone for 10 other nations. And Ethiopia was the last one that he got to go into. Me and Eric went up there about two years before him and started a Bible school, got ready for ministry. We took him in. And when he went in and he seen how they received him, I mean, it was just, it was over the top. And now you got to, that was right before, not too long before he went to be with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he actually fulfilled those 11 nations. But then all kinds of the other nations was added to that. Okay, but the 11, it was complete when we went to Ethiopia. So when we go back now to Ethiopia, we'll be doing a lot of graduations, okay. speaking in a lot of churches. And, of course, we do outreaches humanitarian everywhere we go. Mm-hmm. We'll feed up to 30 to 90 tons of food in Africa a lot of times. And when I come in with 30 to 90 tons of food, you turn heads in the government. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Else. oh, yeah. Okay. I yeah. remember one time I was going to Botswana. And so they put me up in the presidential area, and which was nothing unusual because that's where they'd put the Westerners a lot of time because mm-hmm. it's secured and all that, you know. And you have a lot of uh, radicals mm-hmm. in different religions, you know. Yeah. Right. And so I'm up there, and so I got ready to go out for tea. And uh, I noticed one of the generals came out, but he wasn't a general when I met him. He was just a private in the military in, in Kenya. Mm-hmm. And I said, hey, you got, you got a few stripes on your shoulder now. <laughs> He says, Mr. McCroskey, he said, you remember me? I said, I do. I remember you. I said, but who you take care of now with all them stripes? He said, you got to meet my president of, of Kenya. I met seven presidents of all the African nations that day. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, and got to share Jesus with them. That's awesome. Did they receive? I don't know. I planted the seed. Yeah. Right. Okay. And God but waters. And God waters. And gets but he increase. still had one little thing that, that we use tools. How I many you know? I take vests full of candy when I go into the villages, <laughs> and I give candy away, okay? And candy in Tanzania is called pee-pee. So right. think of rolling right. down your window and start yelling pee-pee, Stop. pee-pee, pee-pee, okay? Well, and I say one of Terry Foy, too. I said, Terry, whatever you do, do not say you want a big, juicy taco. Because how many know Terry Foy loves tacos? Yeah. Uh-huh. Taco means butt. Oh, my God. <laughs> I could have said rear end, but I want to make the point. Okay? You did point. So you, she, made, you made that point. Hey, so she did. She did not use that. Yeah. I, I said use that. enchilada, use, use enchilada, burrito, whatever. Yeah. But she learned the do's and don'ts. That is so funny. But every one of the ones we take with us took pockets full of candy uh-huh. because not only the kids, but the grown-ups love candy. Yeah. Wow. And that was tools to get them saved. It's a yeah. universal language language right there candy yeah it's yeah. a universe and and praise and worship yeah. yeah i don't care what songs you sing them in it's a yeah. u- it's it's a good it's a god language all together wow Amen. So, Amen. and we could go on and on and on yeah. yeah you know but maybe you got another question or whatever well uh so we ask this question every podcast uh, and we love to hear everyone's perspective and take on it. Mm-hmm. And we definitely would love to hear yours. What would you say your uh, perspective of making winners in life is, since that's the vision of the, the church? Making winners in life, uh, teaching the word, Bible schools, coming to church, hearing the word, like Pastor Justin's this morning was really good. Yes. Mm-hmm. On telling you, you know, you have a legacy to fulfill. Everyone mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. And so I think hearing the word and teaching the word, um, you know, that was one of the prophecies back in 1939 that there would be great faith teachings and people would be coming in uh, listening and bringing notebooks and Bibles and learning faith, Mm -hmm. you know. And so 
that's the key, I think, is teaching people how to live by faith. Amen. And it's like he said, your choice, your choices, faith works by your choices. Right. You know, when you put your choice in line with the word of God, then you're going to have good results. And yeah. so I think making winners is teaching people how to believe God, believe in faith, and keep walking in faith, no matter what the circumstances And we look always like. center around spirit, That's soul, good. and body, not just not yeah. just the spiritual things, but the body yeah. and the, the spirit, soul, and body. And we've always taught, get them in those orders. The spirit tells your soul what to do, and the body reacts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, you will be a winner in life in whatever yeah. you do. And then I have a teaching I've done for years I'll call what, where, and when. Mm-hmm. you got to know what he says. When is it going to happen and where is it going to happen? If you get those three lined up, you'll have 100%. And you can't always figure it out in your mind. Not at all. It never makes reason sometimes. Things happen for you that you don't expect. You know, I mean, as you're walking with God, he opens doors and, you know, the favor of God opens doors for you. We carry out Brother Jerry's vision the same way we have been. We will have winners in life that will come into heaven when we're up there and say, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There, he probably has not had half of what will thank him when he got to heaven <laughs> when he went through. Yeah. Because when you can change a person and think there's a nobody, we started going to Africa. Uh, the men were lazy. They because they they were out of slavery. Mm-hmm. They were lazy. But the women worked like everything and they didn't think they were worth anything. Mm. We wrote books called You're Special to God. Mm, in their good. language good. that we could give to the ladies and the men telling them what God thinks you are. Yeah. Yeah. And that's making a winner out of life. When yeah. you change somebody's stinking thinking uh, into stinking good thinking. thinking, then you're going to be a winner in life. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Stinking thinking, yeah. I know. Really. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be <laughs> and it's too. like in Jude, it says, build yourself up most in your most holy, holy faith. faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. You know, when you build yourself up by praying in the Holy Ghost, praying and faith, then I believe that means build yourself up in your your spirit, your soul, and your body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that even if you're fighting depression, if you'll pray in the Holy Ghost, build yourself up mm-hmm. by praying in the Holy Ghost, depression will leave. Amen. Yes. Same way with physical healing mm-hmm. or mental things that are going on in your mind. By when praying when in we traveled all the time, of course, you know, we went a lot of places to where if a sickness tried to hit our body, Brother Jerry's or mine, then we laid hands on ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It says the believer, it didn't say minister or whatever, right. believer, yeah. lay hands and confess that that, yeah. that healing comes and that yeah. symptom leaves. Yeah. Yeah. We had to do it several times. Mm-hmm. And if you can teach people how to just trust in God, that's it. Trust in God. Any kind of problem of any kind, put it over on God's shoulders. He can carry it. And he'll let, He'll actually tell you what to do that your part is. Mm-hmm. You can't bring yourself out, but he can. Yeah. But you have something to do with it. Like Joyce said, it's all about choices a lot of times, too. Yeah. You know, uh, not long ago, uh, I remember that, you know, I was going to do something, and the Lord said, that's not a good choice. And I said, so give me the good choice. <laughs> if it's not a good choice, you got to let me know yeah, what it is. Yeah. Right, right. And if he tells you what it is, then don't do the other. If he tells you not to go in the grocery store you've been going into for years, don't go. you don't do it. That's but, good. Yeah, yeah. We were on a meeting in Florida. Uh, we got all the offerings. I mean, they were big cash offerings. Mm-hmm. And we're going to the bank to get cashier's checks. And so I knew Brother Jerry was up to minister. Jesse was going to be up to minister. So I knew I had X amount of time. We get in the car, and I get my the guy that goes with me. It does my work. And and God said, stop and get a cappuccino. I said, I ain't got time oh, to I don't mind if I do. No cappuccino. <laughs> I said, Lord. Is, I'm going to use that with my husband. Well, God told me I had to I stop said, and get a cappuccino. <laughs> I said, Lord, you know i got to be back at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he yeah. said, stop and get a cappuccino. Now, you either hear him or you don't. Yeah. Right. So it's either the flesh right. or it's the spirit. Yeah. So we went on a little way, and I looked over at the guy, and I didn't, I didn't say what I heard. And finally he said, I'm telling you, I want you to stop and get a cappuccino. He knew we liked cappuccinos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so finally I seen a coffee place. And I said, Wally, well, pull over. And so he pulled over, and I said, uh, I said uh, we're going to get a cappuccino. 
He said, well, why would we do that? He said, you know, we got to be back for Brother Jerry's going to be up ministering. I said, I don't know. All I know is God said, stop and get a cappuccino. They were robbing the bank. Uh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. And when we got there, they had already captured them. If we had put our deposit in early, they would have robbed the yes. bank. And it was cash. Or robbed yeah. you. Or, or robbed, robbed you. Us. <laughs> so we went in the middle. So I thought, he knows everything. So I, I yeah. came up with a little slogan. God knows all things and he even knows my part. Yeah. And that's really. And mm -hmm. if you can teach people that, how can they be a loser in life? Yeah. yeah. They can't be. Just being led by the Spirit. Being led by the Spirit. That is so good. Yeah. Sometimes down, it's just a thought. Change lanes. Yeah. You know. Change lanes. I don't see no reason. <laughs> there, I don't see nothing. Change lanes. Just yeah. do change it. Change lanes. Yeah. Why? It don't hurt nothing. No. And you just might not it. see a just thing, but it. he did. All right. We don't see what he's doing. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that was just so good. I love, I love that. And you Thank know, it could go for hours. I know. Because <laughs> I'm getting hungry. We could. <laughs> we'll have to do a part two at some point. Okay, that's well, awesome. thank you guys so much oh, for joining us. This was amazing. So was yeah. It's <laughs> fun. So check us out on our socials and continue to check out our legacy series. And remember to always give Jesus.